Hello and welcome to Animal Farm Revisited. Our story starts out as just a very simple story and we have our pig. But we will come to find out that the story is not so simple at all. Our story starts out with Mr. Jones, the owner of the farm, who falls asleep because he's been drinking a lot. After he goes to sleep, the animals get together and convene to discuss the farm. The only one who doesn't do that is Raven. Raven has some questions about what's going to occur. Old Major gathers all the animals together and says that they are being exploited on the farm. He questions the fact that they are doing work of the humans and that's not exactly their own decision. He has a dream that animals and humans can work together in perfect camaraderie. He thinks that animals and humans should be able to live happily together. Unfortunately, just a couple of days after this meeting, Old Major dies. Napoleon and Snowball, two pigs, come up with the idea of animalism and they spread the word of it through another pig named Squealer. This propaganda is passed along to many of the other animals. Raven again questions this, but most of the other animals agree to it and a rebellion begins. Unfortunately, Mr. Jones is still drinking and one day he actually forgets to feed the animals. So the animals decide to break into a shed to steal food. When Jones tries to stop them, they actually chase him off the farm. The animals begin to rule the farm on their own and they come up with a song called Beasts of England to show their solidarity with each other. When they are finished singing this song, they break into the farmhouse and they actually see some luxurious things like ribbons that one of the horses, Molly, is very fond of. After leaving the manor house, the animals decide that they are going to leave the manor house as a museum and that no animal will ever live inside the home. The pigs then decide to tell everyone that they've learned to read and they have made the farm into a more human place. They actually change the sign on the farm to read, not manor farm, but animal farm. They actually painted seven key commandments on the side of the barn. Unfortunately again, things are not going as well as they may have planned. Cows haven't been milked and the pigs decide that they are going to take charge and milk them. All of the animals want this milk, but the pigs claim that the milk will be taken care of and that the other animals don't need to worry about it. A couple of days later, the animals find out that the milk has disappeared and they become concerned about who had stolen the milk. We all know who actually had the milk. The animals all continue to work on the farm all summer and one of the horses, Boxer, even adopts a motto, I will work harder no matter what the cost. Snowball organizes the others and all the animals become somewhat literate. They're trying to become more human-like as the story goes on. But just like in the real world, some of the animals are smarter. Some can read and some can't read. And to help, Snowball reduces the principles that they've come up with from seven down to just one. Four legs good, two legs bad. Around this time, puppies that are born to the dogs on the farm are taken by Napoleon to be raised in a loft away from the other animals. Around this time, the animals realize that the milk and apples that are missing are actually being taken by the pigs. They confront the pigs, but the pigs claim that it's brain food, and because they're doing brain work, there they need brain food. News is traveling very quickly about Animal Farm and nearby farms are starting to become scared that the animals on their farm are going to do the exact same thing. The animals worry that humans are gaining too much confidence, so Snowball decides to lead an attack on the men of the nearby farms. The humans lose quickly. During this battle, only one sheep dies, and it is given a great funeral. As they are fighting, they find Jones's gun and they fire it on the anniversary of this battle every single year. Some animals are getting tired of these battles and they decide to rebel. Molly, one of the horses, actually leaves the farm and goes with a man who's offering her ribbons and sugar. Things on the farm are not as easy as they used to be. In fact, Snowball plans to build a windmill and divide the animals up to work on this. This sets the animals against each other and they call for a vote on whether they should do the work or not. As the vote is about to begin, 
Napoleon makes a small noise. Dogs come running in to the barn and they actually chase off Snowball forever. Napoleon declares that no meeting will be held because the pigs will simply decide everything that goes on on the farm. Squealer promotes the idea that Snowball was a traitor and animals come to believe the idea even though they hadn't before. Boxer, one of the hardest working animals, ends up adding an additional maxim, Napoleon is always right. Napoleon claims he always supported the windmill idea and just wanted to oust Snowball so they continue with the original plan. All animals accept this and continue working hard. Unfortunately again, rations are cut and animals get no food unless they work on Sundays. The animals don't realize that the work is harder than before when the humans were in charge, but they do realize that there are necessary items for use on the farm that they can't produce without men. So they go to Mr. Wimper, a human, who helps the animals trade for some of the items that they need. Some animals begin to question this because it was against the original rules, but again, they find out that maybe the rules weren't quite as they remembered. Pigs even begin living in the farmhouse, a violation of one of the seven commandments. But when the commandments are read, they find out that it now reads, no animal shall sleep in a bed with sheets. After all their hard work on the windmill, unfortunately a storm comes and destroys the farm and the windmill. Napoleon blames it on Snowball and passes a death sentence on him. The animals struggle all winter to rebuild the windmill, especially Boxer. It becomes too much for many of the animals and the hens decide to rebel after all the hard work and eggs they are giving to the pigs and other humans. Rations are cut and nine hens die before the other hens give in. The animals hear that Snowball now works for Mr. Frederick's farm, Pinchfield. Squealer passes more propaganda, saying Snowball was always a traitor, which surprises the animals, but again they eventually believe it. Napoleon gathers the animals and forces some of them to confess to working with Snowball. He brutally allows his dogs to attack the animals. Even Boxer is attacked, but he believes that he must be at fault in some way and he actually vows to work even harder. To show camaraderie after this difficult situation, the animals sing Beasts of England, but Napoleon bans this as well. More commandments are changed as time goes on, but the animals fail to figure it out. Napoleon contracts with a local farmer to buy timber for a windmill after it's been destroyed. But after saying that the bills were forgeries, Mr. Frederick comes and blows up the windmill's work yet again. The pigs find a crate of whiskey and get drunk. Napoleon says words to the other animals that he may be dying, but by night he actually recovers. They keep rebuilding the windmill. Boxer is hurt, but he looks forward to retiring at the age of 12. One day, Boxer becomes much worse. Napoleon orders him to the hospital. But when a cart arrives, Benjamin reads that it's a glue factory cart and yells for Boxer to get out of the cart. He's unable to do so. While he is gone, Squealer announces that the doctors can't cure Boxer. He says the rumors about the glue factory are false. The cart was just bought by an ex-glue maker as they were trying to paint over it. Time goes on and the rebellion is forgotten. One day, Clover calls all the others to the yard to see Squealer and Napoleon walking on two legs. At about this time, the sheep chant, four legs good, two legs better. Our book closes with all the animals and humans discussing work and playing cards. They are indistinguishable from each other inside of the farmhouse. The quote comes to mind, all animals are equal, but some are more equal than others. At the beginning we thought this was just a simple story, but I think we need to think again. It's not a simple story, and as we learn more about the historical background and discuss this in class, you'll begin to understand that this simple story about some animals taking over the farm is about much more.